Hey guys, welcome to the spot. Caps here with a new video. MLP Prod Warrior, RPS and survivability rotation. Let's get into it. Okay, so today we'll be talking about the survivability. We'll learn how to use our different abilities in the most optimal and effective way to get the most out of them and truly become as tough as nails. Right now in Cataclysm, every decent prod warrior has hopefully realized by now that 90% of the time uh, stacking a bit of mastery and reaching the CDC cap is surely the optimal way to go. In MOP, however, as you already know, mastery wouldn't be any more important than a dodge or parry. Uh, well, perhaps just a little more, but really not that much, as not only will it have a diminishing return, just like those two stats, but it will also lose any importance uh, it had in the whole CDC system, uh, since CDC is completely disappearing. So in this new world, we see ourselves forced to go by a new law, that dictates every single uh, tank have to apply this scary new system called active mitigation. But why is it so scary? Well simple, people just don't know that much about it. And most of the time, uh, the unknown just happens to scare the hell out of people. So it's really normal if you are a bit skeptical about it right now. Hopefully by the end of this guide, well, you should see that it's not that bad after all once you plunge a bit deeper into it and get submerged all over. <laughs> but enough to chat for now, let's get into it. The first thing you should know is the importance of rage. Rage is now like a new mastery since we need so much of it to actually use our main defensive abilities, uh, shield block and shield barrier. And as such, we'll have to prioritize it over everything else. As you'll see, the more we'll have, the more unbeatable we'll become and without enough of it, we'll simply be defenseless. This means RPS rage generation per second is gonna be very important and in many cases will determine whether we live or die. Rage generating abilities are now gonna be viewed with much more respect and spells like Battle Shout and Charge are gonna even be used as some sort of short time minor uh, defensive series. Yep, defensive series, as a glyphed charge for example now provides 30 rage, which on its own is enough to provide a pretty decent shield barrier, or simply to close up a huge 30 rage gap to activate a shield block. And so coupling uh, a charge with uh, heroic leap for example, or even intervene, will be very smart in many situations to avoid moving the boss too much. And rage as a rage generator also becomes just as important. And so by the end of the expansion, it won't be a very big surprise if we bring up a new cap. A rage cap uh, in which our enraged uptime would reach 100%. Um, thanks to a higher amount of mastery for example, and thus critical blocks. Remember critical block uh, now makes you enrage. This is even statistically possible at some 75% critical block. I'll try to put some details and calculations uh, down below in the descriptions if you want to see more of it. Okay, up next are the spells and glyphs I'll be using in my rotation. The first two and most important are of course the shielding abilities, shield block and shield barrier. They are um, the only uh, rage consumers in the rotation, as all of the other spells will be generating and providing rage, just so they can keep consuming it over and over again. Yep, I know how it sounds. The next two most important are the main rage generators, Shield Slam and Revenge. Then we have two secondary rage generators, uh, Charge and Battle or Command and Shout. In addition to that, uh, we also have indirect rage generators, such as Berserker Rage, uh, Devastate through Sword and Board Procs, and Heroic Leap or Intervene to allow the use of charge. With that comes three helpful uh, major glyphs, 
Cliff of Unending Rage, which increases your rage bar to 120. Very helpful to store some extra rage and allow two simultaneous shieldings. Then Glyph of Bull Rush, which increases charge rage generation by 10. Then Glyph of Death from Above, which reduces heroic leap uh, cooldown by 15 seconds and increases its damage by 100%. Very helpful to, uh, to have some extra charge uses. You could certainly go for a different set of uh, glyphs, but I didn't find any better when it comes to uh, pure rage generation and survivability. Okay, let's see how all of this coordinates into the actual rotation. Now, as always, uh, this is a priority rotation rather than a solid and set in stone one. Uh, so the spell you will be using at any given time um, will always depend on what's available and what your opponent is actually doing to you. Uh, hopefully nothing too rude. Here is what the RPS rage per second rotation looks like. Only use Berserker Rage whenever you are not in rage, but also in melee range. Uh, pointless to use it if you can't actually hit anything. Uh, don't heroic leap into a charge if the scenario doesn't allow it. Better delay it a bit and use uh, that combo when most appropriate. Uh, that's it really, I mean uh, there's no much to be added here. Um, it really is the rotation that will provide the greatest amount of rage. Well guys, that's it for now. This concludes the first part of RPS and survival blade rotation. Again, I hope uh, this was helpful in some way. Feel free to comment, like, share, subscribe. You know the thing. Um, as always, thanks a lot for sticking around. See you in the next one.